Oops. All right. Welcome to the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast, episode number 202. You can find us at www.lifthavyrunlong.com on Twitter and Instagram at Lift Run Long. Also, feel free to email me directly at the address Wilson at lifthavyrunlong.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a five star review on iTunes. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, you should be because we want you to be there. Search for Lift Heavy Run Long Community and request to join right now. My name is Wilson Horrell. I am one of your hosts. I'd like to remind you that the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast is not censored, so listen at your own risk. I have sitting next to me, to my right, the most wonderful and beautiful woman in the world, Dr. Amanda Kimsey Horrell, Jack and Tan. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Hey, there he is. He's late. We have walking in the door, (laughs) coming in hot, big thirsty, Brian Swanson, who's miking up and going to say hello in the same motion as he sits down. That's what a pro he is. Look at that. Look at that. It's like doing a squat into a push press. He just flows right into it. Good work, my man. Thank you. We also have our friend Todd Hinton here to join us. He's going to talk to us a little bit about his killer home gym and how to start a home gym. And as I told him earlier, it's likely going to cost me about $1,500 because (laughs) after this, I will want a home gym. We should have a lift heavy run long gym. Here at my house. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. put it in the other side of the barn. Yeah. You know, we could do that. We could put we could put it down there un, in the barn, or we could have it in here, but I also have my fertilizer and stuff in here. You have a barn? Uh, yeah. It's I a have, shed. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't know there was a barn. I mean, I, whatever you want to call it, it's a, cover, it's a covered area. Big enough to put a gym in, huh? I'm sure you could, yeah. Wow. Actually, I, I have not really thought a whole lot about doing that. <laughs> Next to Todd, we have the Reverend <laughs> Vaughn Ross. Hi. I get thrown off easily, Todd. It's like a squirrel. Squirrel. It, well, it, we've, we've done it different ways. Either I go around the room, I introduce everybody, and then we pick up conversation, but the conversation doesn't end. And so then 40 minutes later, I get to Vaughn, and then we have 10 minutes after I get to, to Swanson. So I've decided instead to just kind of be like, hello, 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 hello. And then we can all let it go to hell from there. Yeah. So, Todd, move your microphone a little bit closer to your mouth. There we go. Everybody starts moving their microphone. Yeah, everybody grab their microphone. Thump, thump, thump. All right, what's up, everybody? Did hey. you introduce Vaughn? I just said yeah, the Reverend. Said, Vaughn oh, was my here, bad. And I said, Sorry. Hey, I'm here. Squirrel. Yeah, I lost <laughs> interest very quickly. So, <laughs> just kidding. She was on Facebook. <laughs> I've got, I need to set an alarm because I'm, we're going to have some structure here. We are. What's, what's new in y'all's world? Tell me about things. Um, I have been i have been through the medical works like you wouldn't believe okay Uh, blood work chest x-rays ekg i even got a stress echo test on the treadmill and by god there's nothing wrong with me (laughs) so so i think i missed what uh, prompted all the testing uh when i run i can't breathe very well and my chest hurts and uh so uh, I've been trying to figure that out, but so far there are no problems. The lady that did the treadmill test said, we're just seeing this with COVID people that they're having problems, you know, breathing and functioning normal like they were before. Stephanie Williams is having that problem. Yeah. So she I still can't I, run. I, I so think, this is going to be a long-term thing, you believe? I don't know. I, I hope not. Uh, he said that the last thing he's going to do is a chest more ct on the chest or something like that to see if there's something else going on but so far everything is really good so i think i've just been making up excuses and it's all in my head and uh if you don't want to work out just say you don't yeah work right out. <laughs> that's have... what i do i just say i don't want to work out right they said it sounds like a room mic instead of headsets so we're not coming through we're having some technical difficulties so please hang on 
Oh. Un momento, por favor. Turn your volume up. And, they said they uh, have it all the way up. <laughs> you know, uh, call me on my cell phone. We got a big close-up of Wilson's beard here in the camera. <laughs> hey, I'm your race director. <laughs> Bring me a license plate and you can run. Where's my cigarettes? Pro- <laughs> probably because you don't have your glasses on. I wonder if I change the audio input now, if it'll affect anything. Boy, I don't know. Default. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here we go. Let's see what we got now. What Let's do we sound like see. now, everybody? <clears throat> thump, thump. Thump, 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 thump. It sounds... <laughs> we do we do podcasting about as well as I chop down trees <laughs> I did not remember you telling me that this last weekend was the makeup day, makeup weekend for the I thought about trip. that yesterday and I found it and it wasn't you, didn't it wasn't until today that I even saw the tweet that you sent from the wrong account to me oh yeah I did do that <laughs> all but right everybody's okay. saying that it's better uh, yep. Yeah, I forgot about that. I, so it's it's doable, Steve. Don't get me wrong. I had a good weekend, but I've got one of them right, but I still have the other one going. But they're probably like anything to get his fat face out of that camera. We'll oh put, God, we'll, it's we'll, fine. <laughs> <Please stop. laughs> that will work. I'll never complain again. I don't know where you're seeing. I never see comments. Well, just because you need to be it's paying attention. It's an that. Android phone and not a... I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's like frozen. I see that... <laughs> Even Amanda's uh, getting in on the <laughs> scrolling now. It says Amanda Kimsey Horrell is watching. I am. Hey, I need to send a super-duper big shout-out to Andrew Causey. Man, he sent us a package for our 200th episode addressed to all of us with a handwritten letter. Who writes handwritten letters anymore? Only really classy people. Only people that that know what they're doing. And the, the (laughs) gifts inside were so personalized and so thoughtful and so rad that I can't even tell you. One of the things, for example, was four jars of pickles from his distillery. And he made clear to mention that all of them contain 0% alcohol, that all the alcohol is cooked out during the, you know, process right. or manufacturing or whatnot. Um, and you've claimed all those. Well, he's already eaten his <laughs> I've jar. Eaten mine. So if anyone does not want, if you, if we'd like to barter, <laughs> if there's anything of mine that you would like in exchange for your pickles, then I would love that. Uh, we have like 12 open bottles of pickles in my uh, refrigerator right now. So Katie would probably kill me if I didn't come home with them. <laughs> If you did not come home with them. Correct. So I cannot have your pickles. Yeah, because she likes pickles. Why did you say that in such a confusing way that would get me th- as excited as I was? <laughs> well, it, it, because he could have just said because no. Because it confuses yeah. me that we have 12 open bottles of pickles, <laughs> but she likes different types of pickles, and she wants to be able to have said, whatever uh, type she wants okay, in that, that makes moment. Sense. He led yeah. in with, like, well, she would kill me if I did this, which makes it seem like he doesn't want the pickle. You're echoing. But then... Uh, I'm echoing. Son of a bitch i don't know how to fix that well oh fawn is okay i'm okay but everybody else is echoing so i guess i'll just talk the whole time okay have we're it. probably well, only we're being picked up through your mic right now roll with the punches I bet is that, that maybe it you're gonna have to wait until the podcast comes out to watch with no echo shut it down well it'll be fixed when it's produced it'll be fixed yep okay carry on but so Vaughn, are you gonna give him his pickles what are you, gonna, he's gonna, are you gonna give him your pickles? It's possible. Todd's shaking his head that you should. <laughs> Steve's already ruined my night by telling me that the that the audio oh, yeah, is I'm all sorry. messed up. Give me your. You pickles. know what? You can have my pickles and you can have my syrup. Okay, I don't want your syrup, <laughs> but if I can have that to bargain with Swanson, maybe for two things. Yeah. Katie, do you like maple syrup? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Either like way, from, like from Vermont maple syrup. This Andrew like Causey is a very classy guy, and I appreciate the gesture. It was very That's kind. That's very sweet. And so, what else we got here? Tailwind. 
It looks like a tailwind package. It's know. kind of what... like that. It is. Uh, lemon like a... tea, maple aid, pure maple sugar, lemons, black tea, sea salt, 110 milligrams of sodium, 25 milligrams. All it's... natural athletic fuel. This, yeah, it's that's totally what it is. Yeah, it is. You're not going to get to have that one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that one at home. There's different flavors. Okay. That's, what you, that's what you got to give up to get pickles. In exchange for the pickles, you, you can have those. <laughs> and then there's yeah. like the Stroop waffles, too, that are the, they're from, from up there. The maybe. Vermont version of Honey Stingers. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yep. Yep. So there you go. That's pretty badass. Thank you, Andrew. I have another Thank gift. You. It is in the form of a da 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 review. Oh. Yep. Show sure enough. You want me to read it? Uh, no. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would we object to that? <laughs> no, don't don't read. It. I got here late. Don't that's a me. that's a podcast. That's a host like thing to say. You lead into things. Oh, like right. That. Sorry, yeah. segue. It's a hosty kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Two thumbs up, five stars. I'm a runner, lifter in Seattle area. I found your podcast by way of your 2017 documentary about the Tunnel Hill 5100 miler you posted on YouTube. That video is one of the very few that I enjoy rewatching. And your podcast never fails to inspire and entertain. entertain. Keep up the great work. How Sweet. cool is that? That's very cool. Somebody that doesn't that's, live around here that we don't know. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's, how, awesome. that's how Wilson helped me be internet famous. It's R-ish Open. Via Apple Podcasts. Is that the name of someone or is that the name of a service? Harish. R-S-H. R-S-H. Hershipen. I don't know. But thanks, Harish. Open. <laughs> glad, to, right. glad to hear from anyone that wants to say some words about the Tunnel Hill documentary because it was awesome. That's very nice. Very nice to hear that. So we've had this, this COVID thing that's kind of thrown off a, a few different things in our life yeah todd hitton who is a trainer who is an iron man um who it also informed me that that's the least most interesting thing about him probably or anybody for that matter um but he has got what? this garage gym that is is outstanding and so we've been watching his videos he started doing videos and so, you know, you start watching things and you're like, hey, there's Todd. I like Todd. So I'll watch his Facebook post. And then the next thing, you know, you're like, hey, kind of interested in what Todd's doing. And then you're like, hey, his gym looks really cool. Maybe I'd kind of like to have one of those. And then you're like, hey, come on our podcast and talk to us about your gym. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. So Todd has a gym. How'd you get it? What you Is this a new COVID thing? Okay, what's the difference in a carport gym and a garage gym? I didn't have a garage. Oh, well, that so, that would qualify. It's four walls and a, and a garage door. That's the difference. It was open air, yeah. <laughs> so, hold on. What's the difference in a carport and a garage? One of that's them has a saying. door? Four, four, four walls, a, a garage. A carport is one of those things that's basically just like an awning that you drive your car underneath, okay. and it's open. All the sides are open. Okay, so that defi- I mean, I know what a carport is, but I also think that a carport and a garage is basically interchangeable. No, a garage has a garage door and it's enclosed, and you can shut the door, and maybe it's not so cold in there. Okay. During the winter time. All right, got it. Carports. Got it. <laughs> All the- That's where it started. So it didn't start with COVID, but uh, six years ago we moved into a new house that had three garages. So I started with the small one. And um, just, for, just for me, you know, um, when I'd come in from riding or running or something like that. And so I just started with a rack and a uh, barbell place. And then um, it just started kind of growing. And I've kind of pushed my wife over to the, a little bit. And <laughs> one day she just kind of said, you, you, know, you want the whole thing? And I said, yes. So I took all the three. <laughs> Seriously? No way. Now, was this an offer, or, she, or was she like, "Well, just take the whole damn thing, why don't you?" And then you're like, "Oh, yeah, okay, thank you." <laughs> wow. My wife would never go for that. So you got you got pull up bar. That's that's your first your first thing to put in is a pull up bar. Permanently fixed. Well, when I when I moved into the garages, I, I bought a rack, so I've got a bar there. Um, put the flooring down, and then it just started growing. I got the rubber flooring. Rubber flooring, um, and then started with you know dumbbells and kettlebells and 
concept two pieces, the rower and the assault bike and the biker and the skier. So I needed more space. And even uh, uh, HGD, HD. HDG. G H D. G. <laughs> okay. A, a B C D E F R S T N L E. Yeah. So before COVID, I had you know this setup, and uh, I was really fortunate because yeah. I didn't have any work. You know, I had some work to go. Yeah. People in the neighborhood who just kind of thought I was stupid, they were like, "Hey, now we're friends." Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Do you like working out at your home gym as much as you, as you do anywhere else? I do, yeah. do you really? Yeah. Do you prefer it over going to it? If the church gym, you work at the OLEC, so you have access to, you know, an entire gymnasium on top of all the gym stuff, which is a, a really nice setup there. If you had to choose one or the other, would you just assume worked out work out in your garage? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Is that something that you grew into? Or have you always kind of liked it that way? Well, actually, it was easier when I was um, training and doing triathlons because I could come in from running long or, or riding long, and I could do something and pull ups or swing the kettlebell and, and instead of you know getting in the car and going over to the gym to work out, yeah, or something like that. Or even I, I even tried running to the gym for a while, and, you know, doing something, and then you're just you know sweats going everywhere. You know how that is um, in a gym where where it's air conditioning and proper uh, behavior. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be in places that have that uh, that want proper behavior as little as possible. Just minimize that. I guess I could have fit in at a CrossFit gym like that. Probably so. Yeah, but even that involves travel. I mean, I, I get it. The travel portion of going to work out is is a lot. You know, when you think about if you're factoring in your time and blocks of time, not only getting to and from, but preparing to get to to and from, and then the, you know, conversation and things that come up. Yeah. You get over there and you don't have one thing and then your whole workout's messed up. That was like Vaughn was saying, you get up in the morning at uh, five o'clock and you're on your routine. I can just go right in the, you know, garage. Right. Mm -hmm. During COVID, I put heat and air in it and big screen TV and you know it's just now you're talking yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know I got it I got it honey I'm going to work out <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't mind don't mind the plate of wings and the six pack of beer I'm taking <laughs> with me <laughs> I put in a kegerator and a pool table that's right I had a kegerator at my at my house when I lived on East Parkway and that's yeah. a that's a good thing to have around, especially if you have... Well, it's you know, quite an expense, isn't it? Yes, it is. I was talking about it this past summer with some of my neighbors, and that said, maybe I'd just put a kegerator in the garage, and we can all split it, you know, but then it ended up being like uh, several hundred dollars a month if you fill the thing up, you know? Yeah, if you're was, drinking that kind of beer, which we were, but I mean, it, it's a lot cheaper than buying that kind of beer. Yeah, I mean... it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to. If you're if you're drinking, a, if you and your friends are drinking, uh, I don't even know what the number is. Let's just say it's four or five cases a month. Then it's worth it. But the thing's not going to go bad in like two months. So it's not like you have to replace the keg every month. Anyways. Yeah. All right. So I have a question. Digress. That's a topic so for another podcast. When you were developing your gym, or as you mm -hmm. built it and grew it, are there things that you learned along the way that you wished you'd done different, or or situated different, or bought different? brands of things or the flooring or anything like that as you went along? I think the thing that I probably would have been different in hindsight is I would have gotten a, uh, more of a rack. Instead, I had the, most of my stuff came from road. At the time when I started looking to buy, I didn't really even know that there was other people that sold it. So I bought everything from road, which their stuff's excellent. It, um, but I would have got, I've got a monster light, which is just a two post pull up bar. I would have gotten more of a rig with the, the front and the back. Okay. Um, so is yours freestanding and not attached to the wall or anything? Okay. You are supremely more jacked than you were when I saw you a year ago. Now, you've always been fit. Have you just been on a weightlifting kick? 
Have you just gone full tilt on the... I'm not running long like I was. Yeah. And cycling and that stuff. I kind of started doing, uh, you know, being in the gym more. Yeah. Just more weights overall. Boy, you know, the CrossFit type workouts. Those are so hard, I'm trying to see if I can get good at any of them. <laughs> 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 right, right. Well, if you say you had, if you had five hundred, how much, how much money do you need to get off the ground with a home gym? If you had five hundred dollars, what would be the purchases that you would make? Well, with road, you could get one thing. Right, you know? right. I think if I were to just, you know, I'd get a rack and a barbell and some plates, and and maybe an assault bike to start, or not even a assault bike, get a jump rope. I've been doing a lot of jump. Yeah. Rope. I love that. Because um, you can do a lot with a little. You know, it's so funny. I've got a buddy of mine that regularly posts about, he's like, I get it. You know, going to a gym is expensive. But, like, we, we kind of mocked uh, CrossFit HQ, what was it, three or four years ago when they started doing, like, the guy on the couch with the, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, like, truly, like, you could go get, you know, two, um, uh, you know, like bottles out of uh, your uh, water. I'm thinking of like the closed detergent bottles or something like, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that you can fill up a, a gallon, a milk gallon, you know, take an empty milk gallon jug and fill it back up with water, you know, and you can, you know, you could squat with that or something like that. There are ways, there are the cheap man's way of getting the, the equipment that you need to be able to do some. Well, of even stuff. body weight exercises are fantastic. Right. You could spend ten thousand dollars on a garage gym at Rogue. Oh yeah. yeah. Can you really? I figured you could. Yeah. I, I figured that would just get you like the consultation. <laughs> yeah. To set up how, your how much own does gym. A, how much does a bar cost? How much does an Olympic bar? Three hundred dollars. Does it really? A Rogue bar yeah. or anybody's bar? I mean, you're going to spend two to three hundred dollars on a barbell. That's what I was. Wow. Thinking. Yeah. <clears throat> that surprised me. And the plates are really expensive. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when COVID first happened, I kind of looked into it. And of course, there, everything was gone. But I started looking. I was like, "Whoa!" And you got to remember—is it expensive like, because the demand's so high? It's a, yeah, no. It's always. It's I think always it's always expensive. Been expensive. Oh, but no. I just started looking on COVID hit, so I don't know if they jacked the prices up then. Or, but remember the the rowers a thousand dollars, the salt bikes a thousand dollars, the ski ergs a thousand dollars. You know, it's not like you're going to be able to just go get all the things. Know, yeah. Right. So I'm like really, I don't know, it's really weird. I'm really interested in the flooring. Does the rubber do better than the foam type stuff? I like I like those horse mats. Is that what you put in your well, garage? I put four horse mats in during COVID on one side so I could move the cardio stuff over there. Um, I had to leave them outside for about three weeks <laughs> and every day treat them with some simple green because they so oh, bad. they stink real bad. They stink. Yeah, for sure they stink. <laughs> I've heard that. But I never treated them. I, we just always stuck them in the gym. <laughs> they smell. I mean. We counteract the odor with our bodies. With our body yeah. sweat smacking on there right. every day. Really? They're heavy as hell. God, they're heavy. So that's what we have in our gym? Horse yeah, mats? Yeah, stall mats. Oh, okay. Stall mats from Tractor Supply. I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. How they're much like those things? They're like 40 bucks a piece. Are they really? And they're and for what? Eight by eight? Something like that. Four by cut. six. Four by six. They are so hard to cut. Yeah. Uh, somebody, what we did la the last time I had an experience with that is somebody took, brought a jigsaw or something. Saws ours. Yeah. 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 Sawing through it pretty good. Yeah, the first yeah. first time I think we tried to cut into those, we tried to do it with like a box cutter. <laughs> oh man, that's and, it, a and it took us like an hour to cut one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, you, yeah. And when you're trying to do, how big's the gym? Four thousand square feet or something like that. You yeah, know, it's like it gets old quick. <laughs> yeah, not that you're cutting all of them, but anyways, a home gym is probably not that big. You probably don't need that many of them, you know. But and you probably don't have to do as much cutting. I would think but. the key to the home gym would be how you start. You know, however you start, I mean, unless you have $10,000 just to equip the gym or however much you need to equip yeah. the gym, you know, it would, you don't want to say, I'm going to start a home gym and then go buy a rower and well, then not use the rower. You want to have like stuff. You want to have dumbbells and pull up bars and, and probably get the most amount of stuff that would keep you interested well, I had, for the longest uh, amount of time. When COVID first started and we closed the gym, like nobody could go to the gym. I brought home that yoke that I bought from Mike McGoldrick a long time ago, a barbell and about 300 pounds of plates 
and a rower and it was awesome like that was that was like <laughs> just having that there yeah just like hey, i mean i was working thing. out every day yeah. you know and then and you can carry that yoke down the street you can squat it's got j hooks on it you know so you can squat and you can you can bench you can figure out a, those benches are cheap oh, you know okay. <clears throat> so that was that's what i would do i mean i think you can get a yoke for like 500 bucks or something i think i paid 300 400 dollars for it used well you and know they then, have that used crossfit website you know on facebook that yeah. people that gyms are always closing down and putting their stuff up for sale and i mean that people snatch it up but there'd be a way to get some used equipment i just joined atc for like the eighth time in my life <laughs> this past week <laughs> i've joined as many times as i've been i think yeah well, I mean, the, <laughs> that's right. the kind of places we need to be steering clear of. Well, that's and that's an issue for me, as you can imagine. And I, I asked the lady at the front one day, I was like, I need a towel. Can I take one of these tanning towels? She's like, I'm sorry, we're not really supposed to do that. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, here we go. Then you go to the treadmill, and I'm afraid I'm going to get electrocuted because I got, you know, I'm just draining all over. It's embarrassing. The guy on the machine behind you is getting like the uh, the windshield wiper yeah. fluid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Terrible. We're like a drooling dog. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, I mean, I'm seriously waiting for the thing to fry. You know, there's just, so I can't even press the buttons. They don't even work anymore. There's too much stuff on there. The upside to the Globo Gym, like, I, I got $20 a month. And they have everything I need, and there's not a lot of people there using the equipment. The problem is the equipment's not that great. Like I was doing clean and jerks the other day, and the bar's going <coughs> squeaking as I, you know, it's like, yeah. and like I, I know everyone can hear this barbell squeaking, and it's kind of embarrassing. But and then the the pull up bars, you just can't quite hold on to them as well. Like in a CrossFit gym, you'll tape that thing up. Or just go get some tape and put on there. Right. And if I, if I did that. You can't alter the stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, right. <laughs> right. Uh, so it, it's a trade-off, but, you know. There's definitely a trade-off. But, you know, I think currently I'm really enjoying the old man stuff. Like, I don't want to do the – I don't want to do the stuff that's good for you long term. Like, I would rather sit down and do a machine that's comfortable you know, and that, that does the isolated muscles that really in the long run is not anywhere as good for you as doing the, the full body stuff. Um, but I'm enjoying that, you know, so that's, that's where I am. So are you looking at getting like equipment like that for your home gym? No, I'm not looking at getting a home gym at all. Hopefully. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, I thought we were talking about, we were just talking about, we needed a, a gym. <laughs> well, I mean, you can have a gym. You don't have to, I don't, I don't have, have to a have place your to put gym. a gym. I need to put a gym in your place. You can do that. I'm not telling. So I'm certainly get, not so telling. So instead of driving to the gym, you're already driving to. You can drive to his gym. Because right. <laughs> that'll be better. But I could put tape on the bar. <laughs> but Vaughn's disappointed because I'm not going to buy a gym for that's, him to that's, have that's over the, here. Yeah, now, right. now we're at the heart. But I, I want to make it clear: if you would like to buy the come stuff on, for the gym, come you on, can Wilson, spend ten thousand dollars on a gym so I can come over. Well, like I told Todd, like you don't have anything better to do with all your money. I'm, I'm. I'm one waking waking up away from doing that. I never know. You know, so, yesterday it was, this week it was ATC. Tomorrow it could be home gym. You're talking about, <laughs> uh, like, isolated muscles and, like, the machine or whatever. Like, that's kind of been my thing. Like, I, I just haven't been able to find the motivation. I've just got too many other things pulling me other directions. But I'm convinced and I've, like, made efforts towards buying a rower. That if I had a rower in the house, like... I sit there at night and I watch, you know, Katie and I watch, you know, an hour or two of TV, not every night, but a lot of nights. And if I had a rower, I'm serious. I think I would just sit there and row while we're watching, while we're streaming whatever TV we're watching. And I'm willing to waste $900 to prove <laughs> whether that is right or wrong. Well, you need to. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, Listen to me telling you what you You could probably to rent Wilson's rower for $500. But Proof. what am I supposed to sit next to and not use while I'm watching? TV? Well, it'll only be for what's like all a his few stuff going to hang on. <laughs> it's only going to be for a few days. Yeah, he'll bring it back after he's renting what, it for. What's my den gym going to do? Because we currently have a den gym. We've got an assault bike, yeah, which which does rubber. get used. I've been um, seeing assault bikes. Another thing, like I could totally just see myself just sit, and I'm not talking about like doing, you know. Uh, intervals you know like you know hard fast pace kind of thing but just 
it's going to be more than I'm doing just sitting on the couch. If I'm just sitting there just steadily moving while I'm watching a show, then I think that would be good. And, and I think I think you're right. I got into Queen's Gambit and was good doing show. I was doing 200 push-ups, 200 squats, and intervals on the assault bike, and it was perfect. You know, I had my ear pods in, do my little assault bike, and I mean, not just like I'm going to the games or nothing. You know, just do my little thing and then get down there and flop around on the floor for a little while. And, you know, next thing you know, you're through an hour of a television show. That's like, well, that could random, be worse. Random uh, <laughs> streaming shout out. Um, WandaVision. I just heard that. The strangest show that I've ever enjoyed in a long, or not ever. Uh, the strangest show I've enjoyed in a long time. I think Holly Trim just posted something about that. Basically, you're going to be, con- there's nine episodes in season one. You're going to be confused through like episode seven and a half. Okay, so I'll enjoy it. Uh, and then after that, like it all becomes a little more clear. And- if you're a if you're a fan of the Marvel. You don't even have to be a fan. I mean, I, I don't I don't know that. Holly tried to watch it and it was like. It, it's it's definitely you, weird. It's you know I I don't think you're gonna. I don't know. I think you'd enjoy it more if you're a Marvel fan. I Maybe. started watching Murder you. Amongst the Mormons. I started watching <laughs> I saw, that. I, I saw my son uh, tweeted at you about that. Yeah, I fell asleep, but it was good. It looked like it was going to be good. He had just recommended either this morning or late last night, like that. I needed to start watching it. So, and if you're from if you're from uh, Memphis, you need to watch Buried by the Bernards. It's funny. It's good. So, anyways, you train you train people in your your gym. Is that something that is that a clientele that continues to build through COVID more so than before? Yeah. Were you doing that before training in in your home gym? No, that was my getaway. Yeah, and now it's become your. Oh, yeah? yeah, I mean, is it growing substantially? Yeah. Now, I see your videos. I know that's something that you enjoy doing. Is that something that's been good for business? Well, it's just been fun for me during COVID. Yeah. So I started with a, a GoPro and videoing, and I had, some, I had some clients that are good sports, and they'll let me video and then kind of uh, edit it together and put it out there. And so really, that's just been something for me. I, I didn't really look at it as a way to try to get business or or anything like that. It's just been fun to do on that side of it. Uh-huh. Bought a Canon and a camera, like uh, kind of like what you've got. I'm trying to learn how to do. Um, you know, videoing with that and taking steals and editing together. So that's what you've been seeing. And every once in a while, I'll have a, a, a workout, and then my, my dog jumps in there. I like to put some pictures <laughs> of my dog in there. Yeah, man, if it's got a dog in it, Amanda will watch yeah. it. People love the yep. dogs in there. So, and that adds value to the client. I mean, every client would, would enjoy that. They like that. Some of them do. Some don't want to do it, but that's fine. Too. I yeah. Start Right. Very so, good. Well, yeah, there's no shortage of that. Mm-hmm. Um, are your clients just like neighbors that wandered in and were like, hey, yeah, can well, you? Some of them are, uh, <coughs> um, most all of them are people I've had for a long time. Oh, you, so you are you already do it. Okay, gotcha. And then when COVID came, uh, they moved over to my face. Oh, yeah. You were like, I got no rules in my gym. (laughs) (laughs) Bring your tape on. (laughs) Have you been training for anything in particular? Uh, No, not really. Yeah. Kind of freestyling, doing a little bit of everything, you know. Not a lot of running, not a lot of biking, just a little bit of that. More being in the gym and playing with, you know, I bought some sleds and sandbags and, you know, just doing stuff like that, driving the neighbors crazy with the sled in the street. Are they pretty good about that? <laughs> they haven't said anything, but yeah. I can imagine it's awful sound. I would think so. Yeah, my kids were at home from college. I'll ask them, could you hear that? You know how they are. They can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Were you signed up for the Iron Man before he got canceled? No, I didn't, I didn't sign up for that. Yeah. You got any more of those in your future? You know, the Iron Cowboy just apparently just started his hundred and he's going to do a hundred Iron Mans in a hundred days or something. You know what I think is cooler than that is the guy that did the Murph 
365. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know about what? that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, I, I, that. I did see something about that. I did. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. There seemed to be some he extreme. He did 365 days in a row? Yeah. Son of a Is he still alive? <laughs> There's... <laughs> <laughs> There's some extreme things coming out. I just saw a thing, and I want to say Crystal or somebody like that posted it, where a guy pulling a one-and-a-half-ton truck <laughs> did a marathon. took him 16 hours, but he pulled a one-and-a-half-ton truck 26.2 miles. Man, the body is amazing. Correct. I was going to – I'm pulling it up right now, but I don't <laughs> think there's anything all that interesting about it other than, I mean, the fact that it's super interesting. Like the details are everything you just said. Oh, an Australian man ran a marathon in 16 hours and 12 minutes while pulling a 1.6 ton truck. Was it in neutral or? <laughs> no, it was in park. <laughs> it was in no, reverse sir. the whole time. <laughs> did, did y'all hear about the uh, the marathon guy doing the 26.2 miles of weighted running and strongman movements? I, I didn't read it. I saw the, the uh, little yeah, title saw, or whatever. I I didn't. Okay, I got. It. Hopefully, there's a breakdown of this because this is crazy. All right, get this. Yeah, this was like a strong man Saturday. marathon or something like that. This right? is nuts, dude. This is nuts. Mile one, weighted vest run, twenty pound weighted vest. Okay, we could probably handle that at least most of it. Or a mile. <laughs> yes, a. And mile. then that's it. But his second mile is burpee broad jumps. No, uh, thank you. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go back to our weighted vest for mile three. I think I did that burpee broad jump one once before. You've probably done this whole for thing. For a mile? Yeah, around the track. Mile I four the, okay, is let's... a dummy fireman carry, 120 pounds. Mile five, another weighted vest run. Mile six, a handstand walk. There, oh. There's, oh, yeah, a, there's right. a point where the 20-mile, uh, a 20-pound, one-mile run is your rest period <laughs> when you're talking about all these things. Yeah, well, yeah, I would yeah. never be able to <laughs> walk a mile on my hands. So then he's got another weighted vest run, and then he's got a 200-pound sled push for a mile. Another vest then run. This has to be around a track, I, I'm guessing. Just sled to... pull for 200-pound 200, 200 sled pull for a mile. Another fireman carry, a 200-pound sandbag carry, a 250-pound tire flip for a mile, weighted vest, yoke walk, weighted vest, farmer's walk, weighted vest, kettlebell toss, recreating, recreating a keg toss. And then he lunges for a mile. So, and then he just goes on. Yeah, and probably like his last weighted vest mile was probably like a 420 pace or something. Yeah, probably. I was, like that's that. a good question. I want to know what his last mile pace was. How I'm sure it's it faster than all, any mile I've ever all, How long did it take him to do all these things? Um, I should know the answer to this. It was about the time it takes me to run regular days. marathons. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was not that long. I mean, it was. No, yeah, I, I remember seeing it was. It was impressive. I don't know. You, you know, if you if a pro would know this kind of stuff, nine hours, eighteen minutes, and thirty three seconds. That is your marathon time. I'm just kidding. That's crazy. I could never walk on my hands for a mile ever. Well, that I mean, and I'm sure it's just like. Uh, like we do, like in the CrossFit Open kind of thing, where it's like, okay, you walk, and then wherever you fall down, you gotta like take a step back, and then you gotta go back on your hands where yeah. you fell down, yeah. and then you go for a few. You know, I mean, hopefully he's better at it than we are. I would but, imagine. <laughs> but it I'm would take saying, me nine like, hours to do that. I, 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 One thing. I mean, your shoulder, like, man, your shoulders would have to be amazing to actually stay on your hands for an entire mile. I have to believe he was taking breaks. What's the farthest anyone's but that's ever just walked on their hands? I'm jealous. That's another good question. I don't know. These you should are all research that. Good questions for next week's. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Disney World next week, so you are. And we don't have a podcast on that Monday anyway. No, so you're allowed to go to Disney World. Mm -hmm. so but you all shut run. it down last time, so y'all gonna shut it back down. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Last yep. time. That's right. You, 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 guys, whole deal you guys brought COVID to Florida, <laughs> and they had to shut down Florida yeah, they as you were leaving. Disney World the day after we left. As you were leaving. They shut it down. By the way, I needed to go ahead and correct you if I can get into politics here for a minute. You said you were going to go see Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head again. It's no longer Mr. and Mrs. It's just Potato Head now. Yeah. I don't know. They, they, they dropped the, uh, the genders from that to uh, create some fluidity for, for those that uh, – don't have that. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, better, it's better just stay in your garage. I have a thought. I, we're not going to get into that. Yeah. But I have, a, I have a thought. I have lots of thoughts. Do you? Yeah. I think I want to hear them. No. <laughs> no, don't start this. This is not that just, podcast. Just, no. tell me, just tell me one thought. No. no. Just the tip. No. <laughs> 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 Boy, <laughs> um, man, I was just trying to figure out what. what now I forgot what I was researching. Handstand, uh, hand how long? How long, long uh, world's record? How hand long, long is Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> you got Bond's face for How long is what? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with this ball? <laughs> Just the tip. Oh man, oh, Mr. Potato Head's tip. <laughs> So, Todd, do you have one of those, uh, what do they call them, like the um, the little hot tub that you can just swim in forever that's got like the little wave thing oh, going on yeah. it? Like do the full try experience okay. inside your gym? <laughs> what, is your favorite, what is your favorite one thing that Ooh, you have? A sauna would be nice. What is your favorite one piece of equipment? Yeah, it's so so versatile. I would like to a sauna yeah. would be awesome. I was uh, this this is kind of set up like a sauna. Don't saunas have the wood? <laughs> yeah, it just depends on what time of year it is. Yeah, I mean we, we could get some rocks. We could get some rocks I mean, and, and ha- some half gas. the year it's a Wim Hof chamber. The other half of the year it's a sauna. You know, it's we could turn it into that. I mean, what what do you need for a sauna? Just some some stones and some heat, man. Some water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that here. Same Todd, similar. did you say eucalyptus, like essential oil type stuff? Yeah. Don't they put that on the rocks? Uh, don't start me lying. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe we could start doing know. the podcast like that in little towels. <laughs> Just <laughs> hang out. <laughs> yeah. That works. Yeah, we'll we'll mix things up a little bit, make it more comfortable. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I dig it. Yeah. All right, we'll work on that. Seems like I had something else. Up. Have you seen that on Sharper Image? The person sits in like a fold-out chair and you zip this <laughs> big dome thing up and it's supposed to be a personal spa. Oh. And it's like 300 bucks. I was looking at it the other night and I was like, hmm, how does that work? Did you get it? If you no. can walk uh, a 5K on your hands in eight hours and you can beat the world record. <laughs> a 5K <laughs> on your hands in eight hours. See, Okay, so how does that work? Like, because this guy had to, he did the whole thing in nine hours. So he probably went full force just on his hands. He and probably he broke did a, he did a, a he did a record. mile in in that time on his hands. Well, that guy needs to go show this girl in the UK what's up <laughs> with the I walking. Mean, on seriously, hands. like, is my math right? Like, he did a mile a mile as part of all the other things on his hands yeah. in nine hours. And you're saying a 5K in eight hours. Is well, the but world that's record. like saying, you know, Hussein Bolt ought to go, you know, <laughs> break the marathon record because <laughs> he can run a you know, 100 meter dash and however long. But it doesn't mean he can that's do it for not. A 5K is only three times further, not 26 times further. Well, what's the record we're talking about? Eight a 5K, hours. Five eight K hours to walk a eight 3. hours. 3.1 miles. That's that's the whole record. That's what it says. I'm gonna. It says, Sarah Chapman, UK, walked a distance of 5,000 meters on her hands in an eight-hour period at Glastonbury, Somerset, UK, on 3rd June, 2002. I thought you were saying that's the pace. Like, that was the pace that she kept (coughs) for a certain... But, yeah, okay. I guess you're right. If he could do that 3.1 times, then... I'm I'm betting he can. I bet he could, if he can do that. If his shoulders will hold up. And that's all he has to do. He could probably do that in like three hours. Probably. And he could even take crush a big rest record. in between. Yeah, and still crush it. He should do that. I would. Yeah. <laughs> if I was him, I would. I'd do it now. I would have just done if that he doesn't instead do of doing it. all that other crazy stuff. He should stuff. have just kept going. He couldn't have been that tired. He, he just, if he's that fit, he if he's that, that fit, yeah. he should have been able to keep on going. He should have broken the world record for the 5K while he was doing on his hands, that. And then just went ahead and done that other stuff. What a disappointment. You know, at first I looked at this and I thought it was something honorable. Now that now I have all the information, I right. see that the guy's just, uh, 
scam. He's a poser. He probably doesn't even like McDonald's cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how every post in trail and ultra running community goes. <laughs> every single one of them. Uh oh. Yeah. You're, we're on track. Something we we got to be on schedule. He said a clock. We do. What was that? That was somebody else's clock. Not me. That Not was, it. That was me, but I thought my phone was turned down. I think we've lost our entire audience. Yeah. I well, think the sound was pretty bad. Pretty bad sound. All right. That's fine. Get this. It's time. This is where Wilson asks hypothetical questions, and you have to answer. Is it sponsored by anyone? <laughs> Pickles? It's been some, sponsored by the, sponsored by the state of Vermont. Sponsored by Andrew Clausey's Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Don't leave Miss Potato Head yep. on there. We're leading off with slamming Sammy Renfro. Who wants to answer this first? If you're going to be a superhero in the LHRL universe, would you rather have super strength or super speed? We're going to start with Thirsty. You can only have one, and you have to do it forever. You can't train for the other ever again. But that doesn't mean I would be, like, mediocre at the other. Yes, it does. Uh, it means you'll suck at the other one. <laughs> I, would, I would probably pick strength. I'd rather be stronger than fast. I think so. Reverend. I'm going to be Flash. Flash. Super fast. Yeah. Super weak. Yeah, <laughs> really weak, like so weak. But like I could run, sickly, but I sickly could, weak. But I could run backwards Bruce so fast that I could go day. back in time yeah. and change everything. <laughs> yep, you could do all those things, frontwards or backwards. But you can't walk on your hands because your shoulders are too weak. Yeah, but I could go back so in time the and save my mom from getting killed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Hinton, <laughs> you'd rather have speed all day long. Strength. Strength, me too. I'm going to go Strength. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. Crystal Pistol. If you could only eat one variety of food for the rest of your life, would it be savory or sweet? The savory variety or sweet? Can this, you elaborate a little bit? I'm, I'm thinking that's like salty or sweet. It's not cauliflower rice. <laughs> it's like salt. Would you rather have salty or Sweet. Which one does cheeseburger go in? That would be salty. I'll go into the salty. <laughs> I have often said that... Fatty, greasy, or... All sugary. food on my plate is just a way to get the gravy to my mouth. So I'm definitely Poutine. going with salty. Instead <laughs> of... Uh, instead of sweet. Sweet. Salty. Savory. You said poutine. Like the fries. Yeah. What does the poutine and poutine mean? Uh, gravy. gravy. And, is, that, gravy and, is that gravy? Gravy and cheese. Yeah. Gravy is poutine. Mm -hmm. uh, Curds. No, what is a curd? I know it's, <laughs> it's cheese, cheese. Some kind of cheese. It's a type of cheese. Yeah. You know, I used to work with a girl that would bring. Uh, she was from Wisconsin. She would bring cheese curds back from her trips home, and they're so good. They're like squeak when you eat them. Yeah. <clears throat> really? That's good. Yeah. Just cheese, really. I remember but. Thirsty saying, what was it you had? You asked a question about the gravy that was really off at one point in time. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. It was, it, it was. It made me mad. It was embarrassing. <laughs> <for> because <laughs> I, think it, I think I said it was gravy and potatoes instead of potatoes and gravy. Yeah. yeah. Or biscuits yeah. and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. Gravy and biscuits. Gravy and biscuits. <laughs> biscuits. <laughs> I'm what telling you, gra gravy is the important part of that. For me. <laughs> Everything else is just the delivery method for the gravy. Uh, delivery. It really is. Everything is just a, a vehicle to get. Gravy and biscuits. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't this, remember what I had a problem with now that I think about it. But This was a pretty good question. And uh, Steve Monsanto had asked a good question last week, and I can't remember what it was. Um, if you could live in the water or on the land, which would you choose? But you got to stay there forever. Remember that. You've in seen Splash. Water. You remember Splash? Or water. on the land. You live in the water? Yep. You can breathe in the water? Yeah, you can breathe. You can carry one of those things. It's probably cold down around. there. Like SpongeBob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who lives in a pineapple under the sea. The water. But you can't come out. You can't go back to your garage, Jim. You have to build a you new one. You can have a water, Jim. 
have to build a new one. It would be hard to, to how would you keep fit underwater? Swim. Look at Aquaman. He's a badass. You go. You, you have to go into swim Sandy's that, bubble but there's and no, work out with her. There's no resistance. It's Sandy's bubble. <laughs> he knows way more about SpongeBob <laughs> than he's supposed to. <laughs> what? By the way, how old your girl. daughter? How old your daughter? I was gonna say. I, I was, mean, I was about to give you a pass. I have a 22 year old daughter and an eight year old daughter. Well, and SpongeBob's been around for 20 years. Here's a well. Here's a, a Jeff Welling asked. It's a little twist off the other. It's it's almost the same thing, but if you could pick only one activity between lifting and running, which one would it be? That's not this. That's not the same thing as being. Would you rather be fast or strong? If you had to train doing one or the other, well, I would pick I would still lifting, lift. Probably. Lift. So you'd rather you'd you'd prefer to be faster. Yeah. But your your mode of killing time or training would be lifting. Yeah. That's interesting. Thirsty. He's just trying to make up for like skipping leg day because he's the fastest runner in the world. So you think he's trying to game the system and yeah, that's he's going to get some points back on the yeah, other that's side? That's what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather lift. Lift. L definitely lift. Definitely. I think lifting goes further. Todd. He's going to lift and would rather be faster. <laughs> okay this isn't a hypothetical but it was a really good question that uh ricky chloe brought up he said i have a bit of an arbitrary question but i figure i'll send it anyways last weekend i completed the four by four by 48 challenge what equivalency do you feel it would be to a continuous en endurance event curious minds need to know somebody needs a, I, I saw posts about this but i didn't have the motivation to actually go look it up tell me what the four they ran four like all night eight. long or something every yeah, four every hours four you hours run four, four miles for 48, for 48 hours straight yeah. okay so what's the endurance equivalent of that is that the question uh yeah i think he was i think his he was kind of comparing it to like how would that compare to like doing a continuous 50 mile run how many miles oh. is that it's 48 miles uh, yeah it would be easier mm. than a 50-mile run. You think so? Well, if you have 48 uh, hours. It it it, I think it depends on the person because, like, some people some people are built to do that. Like, let me go four, run four miles and then take a three-hour break. Other people don't even like to run, walk, like five minutes of running and one minute of walking because that one minute of walking just crushes them. Mm. And they have trouble restarting over and over again. So I think it depends on the person. But, uh, I mean, I would say it's equivalent to a 50-miler. And it just depends on the person whether that 50-miler is easier or harder. Well, that's what that's what got me thinking. Except is that it's not 50 miles. I understand. Uh, equivalent to. A 50K. What? No, I meant what, 50 miles. The 4 by 4 by 48 is 48 miles. Isn't that right? I don't I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, 40, 48 hours is what you said. Yeah. So that's a mile every hour? Right. Yeah. Or four but you miles. have four hours off, right? You you have to run four miles every four hours. So however you want to break okay, that I see. up. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So 40 minutes. So you could break that up however you wanted. You could run. You could do one mile an hour if you wanted to. Or you, or you could run, run out four. and you can do, you know, all four miles in half an hour and rest for another three and a half hours. But I think that, I think that like you said, like you were alluding to, it would be completely different based on what sort of athlete you were. Yeah. If somebody was a, a in, endurance monster that was really fast, that really put out, it would probably be doing a 48 hour event. Wouldn't be any, any problem because they can go do their thing, recover and, and do their thing. It would probably be more annoying than it would be anything else. Right. Whereas somebody like me, I think it would be more difficult to have to get my fat ass back up Yeah, I mean, after sitting down for a couple of hours. I, I think that would be an incredibly challenging thing for me. Like I could, I would rather go run like today untrained. I'd rather go do 50 miles and, only take a break when I absolutely had to, as opposed to doing four by four by 48. Right. Well, I don't uh, want to stay up for 48 hours. I don't either, ever. <laughs> I won't. But, you know, I mean, because, you know, once again, just. So if anybody's worried about the, me breaking that record. 
different types of You're athletes. Safe. And I'm sorry, who was it that asked the question? Ricky Chloe. Ricky, you know, like, you know, April Hillston is a good example. Like, what did she do at the 24-hour race a few years ago? She did like 50 miles in the first 10 or 12 hours or something yeah. like that. So for her, like the equivalent would probably be a 24-hour race of doing – you know, 75 or 80 miles or 75 or 100 miles. Yeah, I don't know. It, dep- like it also depends on what the rules are. I think it might be harder to do four miles every four hours for 48 hours than just going out and running 20 miles, taking a nap mm-hmm. for a few hours, and then go run another 20 miles. Cur- yeah, I agree. You know, if they al- if they allow that, that would be super easy. Yeah. I mean, not super easy, but not a big deal. But if I had to stay up for 48 hours and actually run four miles every four that's hours, a good, that's a good, um, <laughs> man, I'm blinking on the word. It's a good hypothetical question. Like we, it, it, and hypothetical is not what I was trying to come up with, but, uh, um, but if I said David Goggins, Hey man, can I run, run 20 miles and go take an eight hour nap and then go run another 20 miles? You'd be like, no, you got to run. Not, yeah. It's not the rules. The, the rules are you got to run f- four miles and then wait until the four hours expires i think that's more of an endurance thing didn't uh than, elijah or somebody do it yeah i think he did uh, a yeah. whole bunch of people did it yeah. Uh-huh. yeah very cool and the key would be not to ask david goggins a question ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah just don't you approach know that, him. you know what the answer is gonna be yeah like get the book out of my face blah, 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 blah. <laughs> why are you so weak you loser <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right well here we go do you know where catching flack comes from? The term catching flack? You ever heard that? Like catching flack for this or that? This is one of my new favorite things is to figure out where where phrases came from, though. It comes from the German word Philagrabacherkanagen. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's an exact pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> Flyer. You sounded native right there. Garabacherkanagen. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Pilots under fire must have needed a shorter word. When you hear someone say catching flack, you're hearing a figurative extension of a term used for anti-aircraft guns or the shells fired from them. I had forgotten that, but I, I did know that at some point in my life. Yep. Very interesting. I've got something else. Even more, almost as much, probably even more interesting. No than way. That. It'll be some, it's more interesting than anything you've heard this week. Okay promise you that do you want to know what it is yeah most elephants weigh less than the tongue of a blue whale <laughs> wrap your head around that brother whales are big <laughs> whales are really big their tongues are obviously really big too yeah big as an elephant yeah it's way like more than bigger. most yeah. Yeah. bigger yeah <laughs> than most not all i mean we're not going to classify all of them but yeah a lot of those tongues weigh more everyone i've ever seen has probably weighed Which is more how many? Then, well, on on the internet. <laughs> okay. A few. When I was mostly when I was looking <laughs> when up you're this question. you all this stuff up. We're out of time. Womp womp. Do y'all have anything else? Questions, comments, angry exhortations? Do Do we need to do a shout out to Tim's URL or? Yeah. Todd. Todd, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Todd, you, 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 it goes by quick, man. It does. Did you have anything? You got anything you'd like to talk about? Anything you want to plug? Plug your plug stuff. Hey, yeah. I'm just on my page. I've got like eight people right now. That's plenty. That's a start. Uh, just so you just, just so you know, Wilson's like seven of those with his aliases. Yeah. <laughs> fit <laughs> underscore like, like, like. fit underscore three nine. Fit underscore three nine. Underscore nine. Two underscores. Fit underscore three underscore nine. That's the Instagram. And then you're also on Facebook on, under your own, just Todd Hinton. Okay. Well, cool, man. Well, keep up the good work. Keep in touch with me. Thank you for my. Thanks yeah. for. You know, seriously, good job in uh, keeping people moving through COVID. That's, yeah. that's a huge deal. Yeah, your gym is amazing. It, it, it's really nice. Yeah. Your biceps are amazing. I'm telling you, the last time I saw you, you're like, you're super jacked. You can teach us how to like. walk on our hands for a mile. Can you do that? Can you Can you walk Todd, on your can hands? can you show us which way the bathroom is? Yeah. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you walk on your hands for a significant amount of time? No. You can't? I've been trying. Have you? Well, then it'll be a group goal. We'll yeah. just come by and I've been trying to do freestanding handstands. I can't. 
We're going to, we'll do this again next year. We'll all do a 5K <laughs> handstand walk and, and we'll see how We'll do how the we can... beer mile handstand walk. <laughs> this guy, part of his thing was a mile of lunges. I got motivated two years ago because somebody told me that somebody did either a half mile lunges like every day. And so I put on my knee sleeves and went up to Olive Branch track and i did like 200 meters of lunges and ultimately had knee surgery my knee was messed up oh, after that no. you directly relate one to the other i th- i think it 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 didn't help the situation it was then that i started getting a strange ticking in my knee that i started getting cortisone shots for and fair enough you know hmm. whatever i also lunge like a like something is is medically wrong with me <laughs> so i'm not saying that lunging does that to you i'm saying that i'm not a good lunger not sure there's much at this point that i don't do that doesn't look like there's something medically wrong with as, me. as if anybody out there was was thinking huh it probably didn't have anything to do with his wonky lunges lift heavy run long number 202 is in the books <laughs> audio sucks. 